What's up, chess friends? Welcome back to the grind. Okay, we're gonna do our standard opening as black in the Karo. See how the opponent responds. He plays knight c3. Doki. Okay, so go for the pin on the knight on f3. Mm, at this point, um, I think it's okay to keep this piece here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's okay to just trade off until, like, uh, I, I've made this mistake in the in the video before where I've taken this knight too early. And you guys just recommend leaving the bishop sort of attacking the knight here until the bishop gets attacked on h3. So, that being said, let's play e6. Okay. So he opens the door for his uh, dark square bishop. I think what he's going to play is trying to attack the queen since his knight is protecting g5. So he's probably expecting me to um, defend with like e7. So I think just to prevent that, I'll just play h6 in case he wants to drop a piece down to g5. For my next move, I can either play c5 on, or, okay. Okay, so he's offering the light square bishop trade, which I think is okay. So all my pieces are kind of on light squares, so maybe my light square bishop is not the biggest asset here at the moment. Okay, now we kind of have two choices. We can either offer the knight trade, get the queen out, or we can try to attack his knight on e5 with the rook. Thinking of like what potentially dangerous squares he might have uh, with this knight. Just going to offer the knight trade. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I also could have just developed my knight out onto f6, probably. This is good. Probably want to get my queen out like onto b6 at some point. Okay. Okay, so if I play f6 at this point, I mean, he could pick this knight. Then I'd basically waste a move. I wonder if the pin on the knight is a decent idea here at this point. I don't quite want to remove the defender from the g-pawn quite yet. Um, I don't want his queen uh, being able to take this and then having his uh, dark square bishop being to take uh, h6, even though it's technically protected by the rook. But, I don't know, maybe like d6 is a more sound play at this point. Hmm. I feel like the dark square bishop is going to be like very valuable this game, considering like where our pawns are. So I don't quite want to just like lob it off. 
Hmm. Either e7 or f6. Hmm. I think it's okay for now. Yeah, if he pushes e5, I'm just basically going to waste a move, but I'll have a kind of a, a useless pawn there. So I think the idea with the Karo Khan is you want to try to get rid of the opponent's like center pawns whenever you get the chance. Um, that seems to be the theme that I've noticed, uh, at least, in sort of like watching the like how to videos in the Karo. Maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but. Okay, so I can't quite move my queen. I can't quite move my rook. Good castle queen side. That is an idea. Kind of a weird idea. I could also play e7 and just castle next move. Let's see. Ideas. Hmm. I mean, I could go for the knight at this point since he's moved his bishop away. Maybe that'll give me sort of the opportunity to castle and then get my bishop onto a better square at least. Mm. I'm just going to do that. Okay. So I think this is okay. His knight really has nowhere to go except over here to like a4. So this is probably a pretty good time to castle for me. Okay. Now, I don't quite want to go to a5. He'll be able to just push b4. I mean, I guess I could go back to like e6, but I don't know. It doesn't seem great. Maybe also at this point, I want to just like start pushing. No, I don't want to like break open. No. The problem with taking on c3 is that he's going to have two attackers on the knight here, which I don't love that much. I don't quite know what like the best square for this piece is. Hmm. Maybe if my queen was out here, this would be like a bit of an easier decision to make, but hmm. where did he put his bishop before on that square? I think I'm just going to move it back to d6 in case he wants to go back here. I can at least have the option of trading off. I think the next thing that I want to do is just move the rooks to like the E file and the C file. Uh, he doesn't have a light square bishop, so I'd like to get the rooks on light squares. That's like one idea. And I think the next idea is also maybe to start pushing up the C file after that. Also get the knight onto a better square. Like if I could get my knight onto e4, I think that would be like the dream. The pawn structure is very good though. Usually at this point when I play the Karakon, my pawn structure is usually uh, just destroyed at this point. On the queen side, at least. So it's it's doing better this game. Maybe a5 is a move at some point. 
or even a6, just starting to get the pawns up the board, up the queen side. Let's see what he can do. He pushes e3. Okay. What does e3 do? Just a centralizing move, really. Hmm. Wonder if e5 is a move. How long have our pawns been connected or uh, attacking each other that way? Uh, I almost have the really nice fork here. Hmm. Maybe I go e5 and push the pawn and try to look for the fork. I'm actually okay with this move here. I think if I go um, bishop e5, I can try to kick his knight next move. I actually do kind of like the position of these pieces. The only thing that sucks is that they're kind of undefended at this point. Yeah, I need to be really careful about not hanging this bishop here. But uh, so if he wants to try to pin the pawn. Uh, you want to do that. I'm almost tempted to just try to just trade off here at this point. Yeah, I think. I think it's going to be more valuable, honestly to let's think about this to just take the knight at this point to take the knight stack his pawns and then start trying to attack him from the queen side because him getting the queen out to f4 doesn't really do me anything i mean i can try to attack this way but i don't really have a great follow-up so honestly i'm just gonna go for this move here. He could go for the pin next move on G3. That is one idea I need to concern myself about because then he can just essentially take this. I almost wonder if it's better to just try to attack his bishop at this point and prevent the pin. I know it's a little bit out there, but mm, I could also just move my king onto a light square and just prevent that pin completely. Um, it's just an idea, but... Hmm. Yeah, h7 is kind of a wild idea, but I almost don't mind it. I just, I really see the pin coming next and then uh, the h pawn getting sniped off. Can also go like rookie one at this point and trying to just push the center. I think if he plays g3, I'll play h7. How about we do that? And then in the meantime, I wonder which rook is better to move here at this point. I feel like this rook potentially more active. It's already on the same file as the queen, so maybe just putting a rook. on a light square and activating it is just a bit better at this point. Also, my queen is just in a really bad spot. Okay, that's fine. Hmm. E8 or H7? <clears throat> Ah, uh, yeah, that's a crappy move. My pieces are just going to get really jammed if I go e8. 
but I'm still expecting... Actually, you know what? This is okay. If I can go h7 and then get on f5... Oh, no, wait. I can't get on f5. Ah. Uh, I guess I could block in with g5. Oops, I kind of miscalculated that knight move. Whoops. Amateur. Amateur mistake. It's a really nice fork here next. Uh, he saw that. Yeah, g5 is definitely an idea. Wonder if attacking this pawn is almost like not the end of the world too. Hmm. Hmm. This does attack his queen. So he will be forced to move around. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just need to get my queen onto like a much better spot at this point. But which way though? I think honestly, I would rather just keep my queen. On hand. Sort of for where the action is. If he attacks, I can just take. Not a big deal. At some point, I want to play f6. Yeah, okay, so I was expecting that. So... I think f6 like has to be the move. Yeah, I know he's going to just take this piece. Mm, g5. I have two attackers this way, so it's okay. I think at this point I'm going to just push H, uh, f6 and try to get my queen a bit more active. Also, he hasn't castled yet. It's like almost move 20, so... I'm running running really low on time. I'm talking too much. Okay. Now I almost wonder if he if it would be worth the queen trade here. Mm, probably not. I'm um I'm historically bad at winning with an open H file. <laughs> so I've just opened up kind of a can of worms for myself. I can attack his queen here. But what's more valuable? Hmm. I think he's going to start pushing this H pawn. It's getting a bit messy. You can either attack his queen or try to break open this file. Also, I will just have like almost a maiden one type situation if I can get the rook and the queen on this uh, F file. I'm just going to go for it. I don't know. This seems okay. I, I want to break his pawn chain up. That's the main thing that I want to do here. His rooks are very inactive, mine are at least somewhat active. So maybe I can take advantage of that somehow. Okay. Yeah, so he's just protecting. Well, he uh he just lost his castling rights on that side. So um I guess I could try to attack his queen, but I don't know, breaking up the pawn chain just seems really good. Um also, I can go on to uh 
If I take this pawn, he takes... I can get out onto c5 and then maybe try to find... Maybe try to find uh, the fork over here on c3. Um, wonder what's better, attacking the queen or just keeping the, the pawn chain? Hmm. Wonder. Yeah, I'm not sure what the best idea here is. Take the e-pawn, or just keep the pawn chain intact and attack his queen. Hmm. Hmm. Eh, just gonna go for it. It opens up the file for the rook. So. Yeah, so I'll probably be losing this pawn, but I think I'll be gaining more in the long run if I take care. I could also try to like attack his queen this way. It's not, not a very good move though. I don't know. I'm just going to try it. I I know he might take this pawn, but yeah. It's kind of risky taking the queen away from the king at this point, I feel like. Yeah, so he found it. He found the play. Um... Maybe just try to like double up the rooks or something. I do have three pieces potentially pointing um, here. He can't really attack my queen. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to try to stack these and hope for the best. I know you guys don't like it when I play hope chess, but hey, it happens. I do still have like a decent um, pawn structure here. I have to play faster and just play more moves so I can try to gain some time. If this pawn drops, so be it. He is stinking. Oh, interesting move. Well, I just want a rook. So yeah, he just blocked the uh, queen defending this pawn. So uh, this wins me a rook, which is really good. That was a bit of a blunder by him, unfortunately. Uh, no, it actually doesn't win me a rook because um, he just moves his queen and then I can't take this rook. But I can start harassing him, which is good. Oh, you know what? I think I'd rather go for this pawn since it's... Oh, no, no, no. I can't go for that pawn. Queen's protecting there. Hmm. Okay, well, we did some damage, so maybe it's time to just trade queens off. That would be my idea, at least.
Maybe just offering the queen trade here is the play. I don't think I have anything else that's like really that great. I'm up two pieces, so I think this queen trade is totally fine here at this point. And now I just need to make fast moves. Okay. I could also just kind of pin his queen here. Um, is there really any benefit in doing that? Getting his king onto that square versus this square? Hmm. I don't think it makes any difference. Hmm. Maybe I could go make some more advances, like if I were to just pin his queen here. Actually, yeah, if, if he takes my queen here, I can sort of fix my pawn structure at least. Somewhat. Yeah, this is actually good, I think. This is actually better, I feel. Now this pawn is pinned. He'll probably push up here. It's fine. Um, I'll just stack these rooks. If he attacks, I'm just going to um, give him check. Okay, so he's attacking the pawn there. We'll protect. Okay. Uh, still no harm there. Maybe I want to just attack this pawn at this point. I want to save one rook on the back ranks just so I can protect the pawns. Oh, I did not notice that. That that's really dumb. Oh well. Yeah, I should have noticed that. I should have noticed that. I don't know how much it really matters though. Um, yeah, those pawns, that pawn was not really like my goal or, like, or anything. So I probably want to just trade pieces off here at this point. Okay, whatever we do, we do not want to lose. I don't know, maybe I should just put the rooks behind the pawns and just push them up the board. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't overcomplicate this. Interesting little structure here. <laughs> One rook versus five pawns. Who will win? 
Well, his king is kind of cut off here, so. Mm. Maybe it's time to get my king involved as well. Um, let's see. Okay, play fast. Uh, I think I'll just go for the rook trade. Hopefully he does move his king here. So he does have better pawns on the king side. I have like a much better situation going on on my queen side. <laughs> so I have to start pushing these pawns up. Okay. Um, so this one is going to be okay for now. I think we just go boom, boom next. I have a check here. No, I can't do that. I have to get my king involved as well. I can't forget. I don't think his one rook is going to be able to like stop all this. Okay, so the king will just protect this pawn here. He's going to look for check, so I'm going to push this pawn up. I do need to be worried about him running this pawn up down the board. I think we have to trade off here. And if I can just make this chain, I think I should be in good shape. Then I can kind of go harass him over here. I don't think his rook is going to be able to stop both sides. Yeah, if he goes and defends this, I'll just push this one up. Also, I probably should have pushed my king up here. He has to go after the bottom of this pawn chain. Um, I'm just going to push up. Oh, I should have pushed that pawn. Whoops. Well, this, this is fine. This is fine. This is good. At this point, he can have that pawn, right? Okay. Well, I have another pawn here that I can have. Yeah, he can't stop all of this. Okay, I can connect these two. Maybe I just give one of the pawns up. Mm. I can take that one. Well, um, seems like a fair trade. 
I wonder if I, let's see. I can give him this one back here. No, because then he'll just be able to gobble all of them up. I wonder if I just trade one off and then take his pass pawn here. I think that's just what I'll do. And I'll take his sort of closer pawn and then I'll be able to win this one over here. I should just be winning uh, his F pawn. It's going to be really difficult for him. Okay. Oh, he's going to, um, no, wait, okay, he'll check here, but I take, and then he still can't take that pawn, so, I'm going to come back here, that was a really bad move for him. It's pretty resignable for him. If this point, I'll just be totally frank. Uh, let's see. I probably want to scoot him over. I, need to, I want to scoot him over to one side or the other. Uh, I don't think it matters at this point. I'm trying to think. I think I want like I think. And I'm trying to think of how to do this. I want to cut his king off from one side so I can just run this pawn up the board. Um I think that's the idea, right? Okay, so this will force this king up a rank. And I can move my king up. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to continuously bully him up upwards. Okay, this is good. There might almost even be like an early check here. Actually, I think this is just mate. Uh, yeah, this is just mate, right? E1. Let's think about this. That's just mate. Uh, let's see. So if I go here, E1, boom, boom, boom is taken. The king is taken these three squares. And then I have this cut off as well. So yeah, I believe it's just mate. Okay, cool. GG. Don't know how to pronounce your name. Dyke and Nina. Deke. And Yina, virtual handshake. <laughs> GG. Cool. Okay, cool. So yeah, that was a pretty fun game, not gonna lie. Um, I think honestly where his advantage fell apart was when he um when he let my queen get out to what was it, uh C3, or am I looking at the board from the wrong side? I think it was C3, right? Yeah, I think it, when I got my queen into C3, it was kind of over for him. Um, I was able to find that check on his king, and then everything kind of fell apart when he lost two pawns. But uh, yeah, I think he pushed, what was it, pawn E3? Uh, and his queen was over here on like G3 or F3. And then, uh, yeah, really getting that square with the queen was kind of where it went wrong, in my opinion. Uh, surprising amount of book moves. It looks like the engine wants me to get the dark square bishop out a bit faster. Um, so I moved to h6. There was some grand plan for 
why that piece went there. <laughs> Forget what it is at this point. Oh, sure. Kicking his knight at this point. Yeah, kicking the knight on c3. Yeah, good idea. This is a miss, huh? He overlooks an opportunity to win a material through tactic. Through a tactic. Oh, I don't think he would have taken his queen out there. I did not see it playing out that way at this level. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. Stockfish. I honestly thought this was fine. Okay, so I need to get better about getting the the dark square bishop out in the Karo. And yeah, the queen on d7 was just poorly placed for a really long part of the game. Um, I think in the Karo, you want the queen on a dark square. Something like b6 or like c7, right? Really, taking the taking the pawn and sacking the bishop was the play at this point. Quite brave, quite brave. Wow. The engine wants him to... Okay. Really. The engine wants him to push a pawn. Instead. Oh, sure. Yeah, just force the dark square bishop out. That makes sense. Yeah, I feel like this was an okay move. Um, I know I said earlier that I wanted to keep the dark square bishop. And I didn't want to get rid of it. But I felt like if there was ever going to be a time to do it, this was the time. <laughs> so, okay. Getting the rook out was unwise. Why you say that? You allowed the opponent to win a pawn by overloading the defender. Hmm. Yeah. Again, I don't think he's. I don't think he'd be willing to sack the bishop at this level. Also, oh, looks like h7 with the knight was the right idea. Hmm. Pushing c5. Sure. I'm surprised this was the play. G5. I was really unsure about G5. Uh, looks like the engine wanted to just trade queens off here at this point. Mm. I don't know. I figured he would have castled and then he would have just had the advantage. It would have been a dead even position at this point. Oh boy. Here comes the middle game blood murder party. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. And push c5. Hmm. c5 and just break open the pawn chain. Makes sense. This move is okay, but it's not what Stockfish would have played. Unfortunate. Yeah, I wanted to go after his pawn chain, but I guess I went after the wrong part of his pawn chain. I went after the head, but it looks like the engine wants me to go after the body. Of his pawn chain. Yeah, rook f1 was a bit too passive. The game was close to equal, but now black has the advantage. I mean, I'm surprised that one move caused like a two point swing in the evaluation bar. That's pretty, that's pretty nutty. Oh, this is so bad. No way. I mean, I know the pawn's undefended, but don't I just get the pawn back on the next move right am i missing something or, or what let me push show moves button oh he had that really nice check there oh yeah 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 and he takes a valuable pawn there too oh i didn't even notice that yeah sneaky 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 yeah, he had the check. Yeah, I think that move actually would have like decimated all my ideas. Yeah. Wow, so it's an equal position at this point. Wow. Big blunders. Pushing the rook up. Yeah, I did have the rook f4 idea, but I don't know. It just didn't seem very strong. Um, Having the rook that far out. I wanted to play just slightly more defensively and just try to connect the rooks this way. But yeah, this was like... I felt like this was the move where his 
his position fell apart, uh, unfortunately, and then he just wasn't able to get it back. Um, looks like the engine thought so too. So this allows the opponent to win a rook through a fork. Yeah. So, man, dropping full four points in the eval bar feels bad. Captured a free pawn. Oh, I had a check there. Uh, did I have a check there? Is that is that good? Can't he just take? Oh, and I can just get the rook out on the open file. Ooh. 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 Deadly position. Deadly position. Yeah. Engine, you so smart. You have opportunity to... Uh, you missed an opportunity to force eventual checkmate. It happens, engine. What can you do? Nah, I wanted to offer the trade here. I can't believe this is a three-point swing. Crazy. You missed the only move in a critical position. I mean, what could he have done here? I don't know. Isn't this better because it sort of fixes the pawns? Hmm. I don't know. The material account was still the same, so uh, whatever, I guess. Huh. So sacking the B-pawn here was the play. Interesting. Yeah. I missed, I missed the attack on the H-pawn there. That's my bad. The dreaded down button. I'm surprised sacking the B-pawn was so bad. Okay. Oh, no. It's not sacking because it was protected already. Oh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> so he was attacking it. I should have just let him have it. Oh, no. Oh, so I should have just went out until like F4. So if he tried to attack the pawn, we could just trade off. Oh, no. I feel so bad. That's such an oversight. I can't believe I missed that. Oh, yeah. Just trading off. Trading off. What was I thinking? <laughs> this is so bad. Um, it was an equal trade though, so don't feel too bad about it. I think most of the end game was just fine. I didn't do anything egregious. If I would have done one thing different, I would have just pushed the king up to f6 here. That's what I would have done. What does the engine say about that? And just protect these two... Uh, sort of bottom pawns here. Yeah, so the engine does not mind that idea. Oh, attack the pawn. Yeah, attack the pawn and then just trade off. Yeah, I figured his king would have been taking some of these and then he may have had a chance to like pass this pawn. Um, I mean, let's just play it out. So what is he playing? C3. Yeah, he'll probably go after this pawn, right? Then we can trade. Boom. He takes. He runs. Oh. So even then, oh, it would have been even better. Would have been even uh, been even better. I see. King c3. Yeah, boom. King something. Boom, boom, boom. Mm, boom, boom. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it would have been a different story. Okay. King f5. Yeah, I should have, uh, yeah, initiated the trade here with the rooks. No reason not to. Whoops. Hmm. Just play this out. I don't know. I felt like he had a chance here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm only up like one pawn here. Oh, it's actually a very equal position here. Yeah, I was uh I was thinking about playing d4, but I figured I figured it was just too easy for his king to take here. So I thought it'd be just more valuable to get rid of um this closest or furthest past pawn, rather. And then it was going to be easy enough for 
What was the move here? Why is this one so bad? I just go like h5 or something. Rook h3. And then what? Rook e3. Off of the trade that way. Hmm. Okay. That just seems like it's a different path to the same sort of result. Go for the check. Yeah, I knew if he was going d5, that was going to be a blunder. The dreaded down button. Yeah, it gives away the rook. So. It was pretty straightforward from there. So, yeah, definitely some mistakes were made. Um, not getting the rook out onto the fourth rank, I'd say, was probably like one of the bigger mistakes when he was able to get the h pawn there. And then maybe just not trading queens off soon enough was sort of another idea. But um, yeah, really his game just fell apart when he pushed his pawn up and then the queen got onto c3. It just kind of wrecked his position. So, either way. Uh, GG, and uh, thanks for the game, and I will see you guys in the next one.